Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the 37th Pi Game tutorial video. In this video, what we're going to be doing is generating a function to handle this Randapple X and Randapple Y. As we saw in the last video, editing this, um, anything within our you know function here, we have to edit in three different locations, which is kind of uh, a red flag to you that something is wrong. Something wrong. So what I want to do is basically we're going to make a function to handle this. So and it's just these two lines here. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this. We'll copy that. And then we're going to come up to the top of our script. And we're going to make a new function right here. And we're just going to call this define uh, rand apple gen for rand apple generation. And no parameters are necessary here. And then we can just paste this uh, here. And um, it's always a good idea to, when you do something like this, is make sure all the variables in here will match up. So sometimes what you might need to do if you've got local variables is you'll make the function and then say like apple thickness. Not too long ago, apple thickness was actually a local variable, right? It was in the game, uh, the game loop. And we could still work with that if we wanted. We would just need to chain, you know, add a parameter here like um, object size and pass the value of apple thickness through object size. And instead of these being apple thickness, these would be object size. But since apple thickness is like a constant defined up here, we don't have to actually worry about that. So this will be empty parameters. Then we see the ran basically the only thing, and then we've got display width and display height, but again, those are just uh, defined up here. So we've got our function. Now all we have to do is have this function return these values. So we'll have it return rand apple x and then rand apple y. Now, whenever we want to call this function and have it return data to us, all we have to do is we say rand apple x comma rand apple y equals rand apple gen. So rand apple gen is basically returning this tuple of rand apple x, rand apple y. We can assign that tuple using unpacking to x this rand x, rand y. And this needs to be a full function there. And that's all we need to call now. So we can take this, we'll cut this. And then we're going to head down into our script and we're going to find where we're calling uh, these functions. So right here's the first example. So we can just basically delete that, paste our new uh, function there. Now we'll find the other spots. I think we have two more. So keep scrolling. This is old code. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just delete this now. We're not using that. And we'll find this, highlight that, delete paste and then again here delete paste and that's it that's the, all the places that we're calling um, those so let's see if that worked out for us so we have snake congratulations see to play let's eat an apple and sure enough we're seeing that our apple is indeed generating in other locations so that's good so now uh, we're able to modify our apples uh, functionalities because we might not end up changing the size of the apple we might end up doing a whole host of other things the bottom line is anytime we need to modify um, something within that functionality we saw that we had to go through quite a few different locations it's highly likely that you'll maybe forget about one of the other locations so these two it's easy enough but the initial definition of it wherever that is up here I think somewhere right it would be easy to have forgotten about that one and so on so it's always a good idea to, if you're going to have variables at all, to obviously have a variable definition to them so we can change the variables near the top and we always know where to find them. But then when you've got a similar block of code that you find that you're running in many, many places, it's best that we turn that into a function because uh, making changes to it will require quite a bit of edits and not only is it a lot of work, you might forget some spots. So now, um, we've got that function working, so we're pretty happy there. And now what we're going to be doing in the next video is we're going to work on adding scoring to our game as well as pausing to our game because sometimes users want to be able to pause. So that's what's coming up. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying. As always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned to the next video.